can vitamin E help reduce and reverse some of your fatty liver? Well, to start with, for the fast answers for those of you do, who do not want to hang around, high vitamin E from diet definitely has protective effects. So having lots of almonds and seeds in your diet does have a protective effect from developing fatty liver. Now, what if I supplement? So the research actually suggests that it's a little bit hit and miss. Some of the research suggests that if you supplement over 600 IU for over 12 months, you might see some benefit in reduction and reversal of some of that fatty buildup in the liver. And in the short term, you might see an improvement in some of your blood markers and histological markers. But actually, the long term data remains unclear. And some of those benefits might actually be because of the fact that you've also lost weight and done other things during that period of time as well, rather than it just being the fact that you've taken vitamin E. Hi guys, my name is Bali. I am your dietitian today talking about all things vitamin E in Mazud. That was the quick 60 second overview for those of you who do not want to watch the whole video, but for those of you who are staying on, here is my breakdown and giving a bit more research and background of why the evidence is a little bit unclear and a little bit hit and miss in this area. So let's get straight into it. What is Mazod? So for those of you who know, Mazod affects 30% globally, and essentially it's the progression of fat buildup in the liver from steatosis to NASH, fibrosis, and potentially up to cirrhosis and cancer. So what is vitamin E? So vitamin E is a lipid soluble antioxidant. It protects cells against oxidative stress, and since patients with NASH or fibrosis often present with low alpha tosopherol levels, supplementation has been suggested as a way to kind of counteract the oxidative injury and reduce some of those sav that damage to those liver cells. And the aim is kind of to reduce the, the peroxidization, uh, lipid peroxidization and inflammation caused by the buildup of fatty liver. So what did I do? I looked at some of the latest systematic reviews RCTs, meta-analyses, and kind of looked at the umbrella reviews and to see what the current consistent beliefs are. And then I also looked at what observational data we have and any dietary insight. In short, there's a little bit of evidence and it's actually quite contraindicating all the evidence. They kind of all argue against each other a little bit. But more, some of the biggest meta-analyses found that steatosis, ballooning and inflammation improved with some level of vitamin E supplementation. And actually the numbers improved. So they saw an improvement in ALT levels coming down. They saw an A level in AST coming down and they also saw, saw fibrosis scores and liver stiffness improving as well. And these were in clinically relevant margins. And this was in a one year trial and some other trials as well. So what were the doses and the duration of some of these these trials. So the antifibrotic effect was both dose and duration dependent. So fibrosis reduction is only seen when the dose was above 600 IU and treatment continued for at least 12 months. Short term or low dose regimens did not achieve this benefit at all. And you can already see a big confounding in this factor is actually it's very hard to track the data if these people would have seen that improvement and would they have had greater improvement with just lifestyle factors rather than having the supplementation and that was the biggest factor of this is that actually is it actually worth it vitamin e supplements are quite expensive and they're not always safely tested and actually getting the right dose is quite difficult as well so i think this was an important point that actually is only really relevant if you're taking the right dose over a right period of time and probably doing it with other factors too that was a big point the other source was the nana study that beyond supplements a lot of observational data shows that higher dietary intake of vitamin E actually correlates with lower all-cause all and cardiovascular mortality across the Mazda patients. So this means that anybody with liver disease who has a high dietary intake of vitamin E is less likely to have any cardiovascular effects such as heart disease, high cholesterol, hyperlipidemia, right? The effect is strongest in those with fibrosis or those who've already got some stiffness in their liver. But I think the effect wears off if you've already got kind of a healthy lifestyle. So if you're already pretty healthy and then you add in extra vitamin E, we're not sure if that has an extra impact beyond having the amount that you need per day. 
Nevertheless, that's never a bad time to say, can we have more sunflower seeds, almonds, salmon, hazelnuts in our diet, which are pretty good servings of vitamin E. It's got cod liver oil there as a supplement. I do tend to recommend omega-3 supplementation to some of my patients, and I know a lot of people do and a lot of people don't. But I've put it on there just to show as reference that actually the amount of vitamin E you get per capsule. And this is important because actually we need to know the safety profile of how much vitamin E can be toxic to the liver, especially for those who are starting to develop advanced disease as well. So let's do some critical appraisal actually, because what are some of the issues with some of the research that we've seen? So while vitamin E actually improves surrogate outcomes, such as enzymes and histology, the certainty of the evidence for mortality, morbidity, and quality of life is very low. And this has been reflected by the short duration and sample size of all of these available trials. They were too short, they weren't long enough, the sample sizes were small, different populations studied, and different doses of vitamin E as well. And it's very hard to track confounding factors as with all lifestyle and dietary interventions is very, very challenging. We also have to consider some of the safety profile. So the liver tox report suggests that daily supplementation of up to 800 IU alongside a safe dietary intake is safe for somebody um, with liver disease to take, but it should always be consulted with a medical professional. I would not kind of do this if you've already got a disease and you're thinking about taking a supplement and you're not sure. High doses definitely increase your risk of getting a dilly or drug-induced liver injury. So always consult with somebody that's a bit more experienced or is licensed to prescribe a supplement, guys. What were some of the side effects? Headache and dizziness, which I think some of the, these are side effects of having liver disease anyway as well. So it's hard to say if these were just related to the supplementation. Nevertheless, it might be effective, as to summarise, but actually combination therapy it doesn't necessarily reduce all of the, the mortality and the cirrhosis risk. And I think having a high amount of vitamin D in your diet from good sources and the compounding effect of having that extra fiber and protein is probably going to be more beneficial to you before you go and spend hundreds of pounds a year on an expensive supplement. Is there a need for future research? Of course, I think we always need more large long-term randomized controlled trials to assess survival. And we probably need to look at synergistic effects. So can we see, can we do a fiber exercise, healthy eating intervention with and without a vitamin D e supplementation, see if there's any difference? Because that's the only way we're actually going to be able to notice if this actually works. And that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. Um, I hope you found this video useful. And let me know in the comments what your thoughts are. Cheers.